A little seed lay on the ground and soon began to sprout. Seeing all the flowers around, it wondered, how shall I turn out? The lily's face is fair and proud, but just a trifle cold. The rose, I think, is rather loud, but its foundation's getting cold. Of the violets, some may think well, but it's not a flower I'd choose, or even the Canterbury bell, but I've never cared for blues. And so it criticized each flower, this haughty little seed, until it woke up one summer morn and found itself a weed. Today we reflect upon God's word, how it has been like seed planted into our hearts. And Jesus is calling us through this gospel to see how we have been tending the soil of our lives to be receptive and responsive to that seed of the word of God. In today's first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we hear Isaiah saying God's word never comes back to him with a sense of void, not fulfilling the purpose for which it was sent. For the word of God came forth amongst the chaos that was here before anything existed, about harmony, about peace, about a sense of order in the chaos that was here before anything existed. God's word spoke through the patriarchs and the prophets to lead the people of Israel from slavery, from exile, into a land of promise, a land filled with hope and joy for their people. And that eternal word of God became flesh and dwelt among us in Jesus, Emmanuel, God is with us, to come into a world that had been darkened by sin, by evil, by death, to give us the hope of an ending life, life with our God. And so we are to see how that word of God, who has been planted throughout human history in our world, how is that word of God speaking to and making a difference in your life, in my life? Jesus comparing the word of God to a seed that is sown, looks at different ways the seed can be received on different kinds of soil. He first says, some seed fell on rocky ground and some on the footpath. Well, sometimes we do not receive the word of God that well, even though we come to church every Sunday morning to hear the word of God and may look at it on our tablet, on our smartphone, on a daily basis. But sometimes we look at that word of God and we think, this doesn't have much traction with my life. It really doesn't apply to me. We just kind of slough it off. We are to see that the word of God is active and alive and always succeeds in that which it set out to do when it was planted within us. In his parable, Jesus goes on to say, some seed fell among weeds and thorns, which choked out that word, that word of the seed. It's important that we consider how sometimes we allow the ways of the world to choke out the word that is planted within us by our living Lord, our God, that chose us the way to life. In our world today, there are three categories of how we can sometimes allow the weeds, the thorns of this world to choke out the message of the world. The first of these ways that sometimes the word is choked out in our lives is through a desire for materialism and the affluence of our world. Pope Francis, in his encyclical Evangelii Gaudium, writes, The great danger in today's world is the feverish pursuit of frivolous pleasures and material things. Whenever our interior life becomes caught up in its own interests and concerns, there is no longer room for others, no place for the poor. God's voice is no longer heard, the quiet joy of his love is no longer felt, and the desire to do good fades. So how do we give in to that constant desire for more things that we think can satisfy us, that we think can bring us happiness in, into our lives, and allow that thirst for things, for the materialism, the affluence of our world, to push away the power, the impact of the gospel on our lives? The second way in which the ways of this world allows that word of God to be choked out is through the impurity and the blatant sexuality that is so present in our world today. Our world causes us 
to focus on the beauty that we see around us, allow our eyes, our minds, our beings to be swayed by the beauties that we see and to, to seek out beauties to give us a sense of pleasure, a sense of satisfaction. As St. Augustine said so beautifully, our hearts will continue to be restless until they find a rest in God, God alone. That we are to look beyond the mere creatures that God has created to see the Creator and give God the praise and not just seek the beautiful persons, the beautiful things that we can see in this world. And the third way in our world that we can allow the Word of God to be choked out by the ways of our society is desire for popularity and praise. We often allow that Word of God to go second place. We don't seek first the kingdom of God as Jesus asked us to, but we seek whatever it will be that will allow us to be accepted, to be praised, to be liked by others. We see in our modern world of social media the desire to be liked, to be friended by so many people, rather than following God's will first and seeking out God's kingdom with all of our hearts. So this week we can reflect upon whether each of these thorns and, and thistles are choking out the word of God. This desire for materialism and affluence, the blatant impurity and sexuality of our society, and the desire for popularity and praise. How do we give in to these rather than falling for the word of God with all of our hearts and all of our love? For these will give a quick fix, will give us little satisfaction, but then we'll end up empty, void, looking for more, that more is God, which only can truly satisfy. If we have been truly tending the soil of our lives to be receptive to the word, then our lives will ring with the sound of the gospel as others see our lives, as others hear our testimony. Like the words of the gospel that we read, when we love those who have personally persecuted us, the gospel will be seen in us. When we forgive those who have hurt and offended us, the gospel has taken root. When we show genuine generosity and concern for the poor, we have made a home for that word in our lives. When we show patience to the one who gets on our nerves, we have taken on the mind of Christ. When we genuinely treat others the way we want to be treated, we will allow that law of God to resonate with our hearts. And so how shall we turn out at the end of our lives? Will we truly be seeds that bloom into a wonderful harvest that gives glory and praise to God? Or will we be simply like weeds that are planted where we want to be planted and miss out on the desires, the joy that God has for us for all eternity? Mm -hmm.